I am Cappy Pondexter. Diana Taurasi. Sherry Nelson. I'm Peekaboo Street. And I got something to say. Female athletes have to overcome the bias that their game isn't as good as the men's game. Are boys bigger, stronger, faster? Yes. Is that all that has to do with being an athlete? No. The half pipe doesn't care that I'm a girl. I want to pitch for the Boston Red Sox. And when I look in the mirror, I see an athlete. I am a runner. A snowboarder. Ball player. Triathlete. Softball player. I am an athlete. And I'm proud of that athlete. It's not a girl thing. It's not a boy thing. It's a skills thing. Women have been revolutionizing sport as we know it. Historically, sport has not been inclusive of women working in or participating in male-dominated sports. But, in recent years, the culture of sport has been rapidly changing. We are beginning to witness an increase in women coaching, officiating, reporting, and playing in male-dominated sports at all levels. This topic is important to cover because women represent over half of the world's population and they have lacked the visible representation in male-dominated sports. This has also limited women in their career options, regardless of how qualified they are to perform a role. Because women have had minimal visible representation, other women interested in working in sports have been discouraged from pursuing this career field. We are analyzing how the culture of sport is becoming more inclusive of women and showcasing the brave women who are revolutionizing sport and pushing for positive change and increased representation. When analyzing the integration of women in sport, it's important to take a look at whether it's a, a success or a failure. And one way to do that is to look at the history of the integration of sport. So we'll start with uh, Title IX being signed. It was an, signed. It was enacted in 1972 by President Nixon, and progress has been a steady installment since then. In general, since Title IX has been enacted, women's participation in sport has risen. So for reference, before the enactment of Title IX, there were less than 32,000 women that participated in intercollegiate athletics and 300,000 girls in high school athletics. Now, this number was reassessed in 2016, and the NCAA reported that in all divisions, there was 53% female participation in sports compared to 47% male participation in sports. So this was an upward trajectory. Roger Goodell then instituted a Rooney Rule for women in executive roles at the Women's Summit before Super Bowl 50, and this says that a woman candidate must be interviewed by teams looking to fill a front office position. Now we're going to look at some specific examples within the last decade of women breaking into some male-dominated industries in sports. So first we'll look at uh, broadcasting, where we have Andrea Kramer and Hannah Storm. Now Andrea Kramer and Hannah Storm became the first female team to call regular season NFL games in the fall of 2018. Now, Amazon Prime Video began streaming with Kramer and Storm on Thursday nights for 11 games. And then if you look at youth sports, you have Sam Gordon. Yes. Can I have a ball, please? You want this? Yes. Come and get it. Who in the spring of 2015 started a girls' youth tackle football league in Utah, which was one of the first ever. This was revolutionary. From 2015 to 2018, the league has gone from 50 members to over 350 members. Gordon's family filed an official Title IX lawsuit against three Utah school districts in 2017, advocating for the creation of a girls' tackle football team at the high school level. If we shift our attention to coaching, we'll find Becky Hammond. So Hammond is the first ever female to co coach to coach in the National Basketball Association. She's led the Spurs to a summer league title in 2015, showing that her stellar on-court resume is evident of the potential she has as a coach. So several athletes have came out in support of female in sports like Hammond, like Rudy Gay and Pau Gasol, who complimented her coaching style. In the officiating world, we look to the NFL's Sarah Thomas, who was the first female official to be a referee in a playoff game. Women in sport help create public notice and social change, as sport is a medium for the transportation of knowledge. Talk shows and podcasts, such as the Football Girl podcast, help create topics of discourse and discussion and bring women to the forefront of traditionally male-dominated sports. Communities are also brought together through the transmission of information due to sport. And athletes are considered equally as important as civil rights and religious figures, such as Serena Williams advocating for the equal treatment of men and women of all ethnic backgrounds in sports. And Kadiha Diggs is the only Muslim member of the U.S. triathlon team and wears her job during competition, which promotes change and pushes for the inclusivity of people of all religious backgrounds to be able to participate in sports. Sport is everywhere in our day-to-day -day lives, and this relevancy creates for the diffusion of information 
across all platforms. There are 24-hour sports channels such as ESPN, Fox Sports 1, Golf Channel. Now we have increased media coverage of women such as Nike and Under Armour creating these badass commercials of women in the sports arena. ESPN is also expanding its coverage of WNBA games due to popular demand. And now there's even media coverage on the lack of women and female representation in traditionally male-dominated sports. Sport is a vehicle for social change for a few reasons. One being that sport is a microcosm of our society. Who is successful in sport should represent the proportion of interested viewers in sport. And because viewership involves both genders, both males and females should be provided the platform to practice sport. Sport can be viewed as a pastime, a culture, or even a religion in America. With this being said, since women represent over half the population, the opportunities for success in sport for women should mirror that of the society in which it takes place. Sport can also function as a meritocracy. In a meritocracy, superior performance under fair competition wins. Natural ability also plays a huge factor in that it does not have to be taught or learned. This concept of a meritocracy is idealistic while also hegemonic. Sport can be beneficial because it could create high cultural capital. In other words, being successful in your sport likely translates to prominent social standing and popularity. This can also be interpreted as elite performance translating to extreme social mobility or high cultural capital. Athletes may also have a greater motivation to succeed in their sports because of the social capital possibilities. Historically, sports have always been a safe haven or an outlet for oppressed communities. In the sport of boxing, working class people and minorities make up most of the participants because boxing gave oppressed communities opportunities that other sports didn't. Higher class sports were a larger investment and not tailored to the working class or minorities. In Major League Baseball, the Brooklyn Dodgers focused on the working class audience and oppressed communities. With Jackie Robinson playing for this team and the games being family friendly, baseball has also fostered innovation and progress. Although we have described much success and progress in the field of women in sport, there are definitely next steps and future goals where there's room for improvement. The first can be an equal media coverage for women's sports. Currently, there is a major disproportion in favor of male sports on television and radio. This fight for equality will continue to exist, and a great solution would be to increase female hires in broadcasting companies and to develop women's representation in sport. This will go a long way in having more opinions in the room. Another inequality that still exists that can be improved upon is in sports broadcasting. As we mentioned before, Andrea Kramer and Hannah Storm have made strides in this area, but have not solved this issue. As of 2014, 90% of editorial roles, 90% of assistant editorial roles, 88% of columnists, 87% of reporters, and 95% of news anchors are men. Out of the 183 sports talk shows that were on the air then, only two had female hosts. The last point of improvement we can touch on before we conclude is that there's a lack of women in leadership positions within organizations. There are a multitude of reasons for this phenomena. It could be coming from the fact that sports is still a gendered institution in which there are traditions that are uphold, upheld in high standing, as well as the fact that there still may be misplaced mistrust within many sports organizations and who can coach and lead them. To further on this point, women hold only 33% of general managers' positions within the WNBA. And outside of the U.S., women are even less likely to hold these positions. Of the 2,600 coaches in the four major American sports, only six are women. That equals 0.23% of all coaches. Ultimately, although we feel there's still a ton of room for improvement, there's no doubt that a social change phenomenon has began to occur. Uh, in order to continue this phenomenon, we feel it's, the onus is on all of us to continue to support all those men and women who want to make their dreams happen. And women should by no means stop or slow down their efforts to further this social change, continuing to prove their worth in every aspect of society with an emphasis in sports. Uh, in the, uh, the last decade has undoubtedly seen a large increase in female opportunities in traditionally male-dominated sports. Now, this is due to a couple reasons. First of all, the nature and construction of sports allows for these kind of opportunities uh, to impact less fortunate groups and oppressed groups. Uh, now, there's a list of several improvements that can definitely impact the achievement of this movement that will hopefully be built on over time. One of the main drivers for this 
uh, social change movement has been the media coverage that's dominated women's breaking into male-dominated fields. And this has allowed for the cultivation of social change in sport. Now, sport specifically as an arena is the perfect place for a phenomenon such as this to, to take place. It's a meritocracy that awards success in terms of talent and can be a haven for minority groups. The success has been truly palpable, but there's a lot of room for change in many other aspects of the sport industry, such as executive positions, broadcasting, and media coverage, and we certainly look forward to seeing these take place. Our true hope is that movements like these in the future won't even have to be considered a social phenomenon. The pioneers mentioned will go down as trailblazers for the normalcy that will be the standard in years to come. When I was growing up, girls just didn't run in public. No one on my all-boys team would pass to me. Dad told me I couldn't be a boxer. He said I was too small. There was a guy who tried to spit on me and then push me out of his way. There comes a point where you have to be sure of yourself. People aren't used to women being so passionate. It scares them. One day, I just said it doesn't matter what other people think. I'm a fashion model who can dunk. I'm a girl. That doesn't mean I have to wear a skirt. Doesn't mean I can't get all fired up. They used to say that girl is crazy. But then I just kept winning. I didn't set out to dominate. I just did. Somebody's got to be the best. So why not me? I'm 55 years old, and I run close to 70 miles a week. I never felt like quitting. There's something telling me to do it every single day. Just want to play ball.